Today I'm going to be showing you how to digitize your slide or transparency film using Silverfire scanning software. Now, although it can be more difficult to expose than negative films, slide film can be one of the most rewarding aspects of film photography. In my opinion, nothing beats the colors and the look of a correctly exposed slide, and it can actually be a lot easier than negative films to scan. Today, I'm going to be scanning some 6x7 negatives taken on a recent trip to North Cornwall with this trusty Pentax 67. Now, the frame I'm scanning is actually this one here, but I'm sure you can't really see that on the YouTube compression. So let's wait till that's in the scanner. I'm using an Epson flatbed, although the Silverfire software has versions for most scanners on the market, and I'm sure whatever um, maker scanner you use, you'll be able to find a version that will suit it. Full disclaimer, I have actually been sponsored by Silverfast to make these videos, but I'm not just gonna be positive about it because they're giving me money. I have been using their software for a number of years now, and I do think it is a significant and worthwhile step up from the manufacturer of shipped software. Epson scans are right, Silverfast is better, and if you really wanna get the best colors, the most detail out of your scan, it really is worth the investment. Okay, let's jump into loading some scans and yeah, let's get on with it. Now I am going to quickly show you the process of loading the scanner. Now it might seem pretty self-explanatory, but it's actually really important to getting a good final result. What you want to do is you want to keep your film dust free and flat in the holder. Now I'm putting these gloves on. These are super important. I never scan without them. It keeps the oil and dirt on your hands from getting onto your um, transparencies, which obviously, once magnified by the scanner, can really ruin an image. This is the Epson supplied film holder. Now, all this does is keep the film flat and perpendicular to the scanning array. So, all I gotta do is pop up this frame. I do use this microfiber cloth to keep dust off the actual holder itself. When it comes to flatbed scanning, dust really is the enemy and there is not much you can do to fully win that battle. I do have one other trick up my sleeve, which is this rocket blower here. So what I'm gonna do is making sure that the text on the rebate is read left to right. And I'll hold my film in the middle and I'm just gonna gently use this rocket blower to remove any dust that's become lodged on the back of the transparency. Now that that's clean, I can hold it face down so that none of the dust settles on the side I've cleaned. I'm gonna do a quick dust off of the scanning tray. And now you can see why the gloves are useful because I wouldn't be able to touch the, uh, the front of the slide if I didn't have these on. But he's laying down in the tray, that looks good. Click him in. And you notice that I didn't actually clean this side of the transparency when I first put it down. And that's because now that he's held in, I can just quickly go over the top. And actually, if the cloth's nice and clean, I can do a quick pass over the top like that. You've got to be careful to keep this clean because if there is any grit on that, it will scratch as you pass over. But that looks good. So lift this guy up. Line them up with the scanner, close the lid, ready to go. Okay, let's have a quick look at what comes up when you first open Silverfast. Here we go, Silverfast AI Studio, although this is all the same if you're using SE Plus or even the more basic version, you just lose some of the features. Now, I'm scanning a transparency it is positive and 48 to 24 bit color is what I want. So I'm going to start by clicking pre-scan and this is just going to give me a low res overview of what's been loaded into the scanner. Now whilst that's happening it does take a second for the scanner heads to go across. This red box here is all that's going to be included when I press the scan button. So you can see that if I press that now it would include most of the frame and only um, a small part of it would be the two pictures. So what you can do is you can just bring this in and place that around the edge of the picture you want to scan. Now, if I wanted to, I could scan both these pictures at once. 
I can go duplicate frame and just drag this across. And if I was scanning a slightly smaller negative, I could maybe even have three. I know that this scanner, when scanning 35mm, can take up to 18 frames at once. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to scan the frame of the lighthouse. Let's zoom in. Just clicking this plus here will take me to a more detailed view of what I'm working with. At this point, I could use the Auto CCR tool to let the software make its best estimate of what I want to do. But for the purposes of this video, I think that I'll walk you through it step by step. Now I can see straight off the bat that this image is a little bit underexposed and it's just a little bit blue for my tastes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you through the tools that I can use to fix the image up and make it look more like I want to. I want it to. So I'm going to start with this. This is the scan dimensions tool. Now this is the resolution that the scanner will output the file at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up to 2400, 3200. Around there is the kind of the optical limit of the scanner. So that's pretty good. Let's call this Lighthouse. A very imaginative name. And I'm going to make sure that that's exported to my desktop. Okay, no surprises there. Next, I'm going to go to my histogram and I'm just going to quickly set my white point. And I think that will deal with some of the darkness issues. Okay, that's already looking much better. And I'm just adjusting this so that I'm right up getting as much of the image as I can without getting any of the, uh, the black edge of the film. So that looks good. Okay. I have actually already scanned this, so I'm not being too careful with my edges. But if you want to get the most out of it, you can zoom in and fine tune that to your heart's content. Okay, now that my white point's set, I'm going to move my midtone just to see if I can get a little bit more detail out of the sky, and maybe a little bit more detail out of the rocks. Okay, you know, that looks pretty good where it is. I'll leave it there. Oh, that is at zero. Okay, next step, I'm going to go into my global CC. Now, this is one of the two color correction tools. The global CC allows you to change the entirety of the image at once, and the selective CC allows you to mess with individual color channels. Now, I'm not going to use selective CC, although I will quickly open the tool to show you what it's about. Now, this means that I can adjust the hue, the saturation, and the luminance of the red channel with these three sliders. So if you look at some of the red areas over here, if I bump up the saturation, I get more red. Although I'll be honest, it's not too pronounced. You can see it a bit in the cliff over here. Let's put that back to zero. And the luminance, likewise, it's just adjusting that one red channel. But I'm I'm pretty happy with all the colors individually. I just want to add a bit of a, a kind of warmer sunset cast to the whole image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my selective color correction tool and open global CC. Now this is quite an intuitive bit of software. This neutral point, this little black dot, is where the image is currently. And what I can do is I can pick this dot up and I can move it around this circle. So looking at this area of the image, it seems like there's a bit of a blue cast. And I think that the, the color that I'm trying to move away from is around here, this kind of area. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just put him back to zero, is I'm gonna move the black dot away from here. So straight in a line, it's somewhere in the middle of the orange and the yellow. Okay, and that's looking, to my eyes, significantly better straight up. I'm gonna quickly turn this off so you can see the difference. So this is without. And if I go and make the same adjustment, you can see that's looking a lot more like a sunset rather than a sort of blue hour moonlight kind of thing. With this tool, you can actually make more fine-tuned adjustments to the highlights, mid-tones and shadow areas. So I am gonna use it to just bump the power up a little bit in my sky and really get some of the reds and yellows into it. 
And whilst I'm here, I'm gonna bump a little bit of it into the shadows as well. You can see that when I'm using the shadows, it's really only affecting this area of the image. But when I use the highlights, it's really affecting both the sea, the sky, and actually the lighthouse itself. But I'm really happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. So on to the next tool. Next up, I've got to use these tools in the vertical bar here to really get the most out of the detail and also do a little bit of dust and scratch correction. So I'm going to go into USM, which is just an abbreviation of Unsharp Mask. And all oh, that looks good. And I'm also going to turn on ISRD. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to press this button here and that's going to do a full resolution scan of the whole image. Now, the reason I turned on ISRD is because whilst it's doing the preview, it's also going to do another scan using the infrared channel. And that's going to allow the scanner and the software to pick up any dust or defects in the uh, transparency itself. So if you see the scratch here, for example, I'm just going to click on HQ. This does take five or six minutes. It is essentially doing the scan as it would if it was completing it. But it's going to show me what the effects of the sharpening are on the image. And it's also going to show me how well the dust and scratch removal is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my viewfinder on this lighthouse. And I'll speed this up. This will take quite a long time. But you'll really be able to see what it's doing and quite how much of an effect particularly ISRD can have and uh, how much time it can save you. Okay, the um, high quality scan is back from the scanner and here we go. I'm seeing a significant amount of detail in both the lighthouse. Let's pan down and have a look at the cliffs. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm actually pretty happy with how this has come out and this is just on auto sharpness, but bear in mind you can also turn it down using these presets here or actually just adjust it manually. This all looks good to me. Um, that is quite high on the power, but as long as it doesn't look over sharpened, I'm happy with it. Let's have a look up in the sky and see if we can find any dust. It seems that the infrared reduction has done a pretty decent job. Now, to really underline quite how invaluable this is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my loop over the lighthouse and a bit of sky and I'm just going to press this button here to briefly deactivate the ISRD. Now what this should show you is um, a large amount of dust will appear in the sky and this is essentially what the filter has been doing. So again, it will take a second. I'll speed this up and let's see how much of an effect it's had. Okay, now that the tool's turned off, you can see this huge huge storm of dust and general scratch badness in the sky up here. Now, you could clone this out in Photoshop, but you'd be spending hours. Um, I really cannot underline quite how useful the infrared channel is. Just to show you one more time, I'm going to turn it back on and just keep your eye on this area of the screen right here where that prominent bit of dust is. And as you can see, it completely clears all of that dust scratch out of the sky. And this looks absolutely great. Next one down. Now this is SRDX. This essentially does the ISRD function, but for films which aren't fully transparent. Black and white films and things like Kodachrome actually have too much silver in them to allow the infrared to see through the film. So this is a sort of a toned down version that works using software and algorithms to do the same job but because this one's on I can completely ignore this I'm not going to use that for this image. Next one down is adaptive sort of contrast optimization. optimization. Now what this does is it attempts to give me a little bit more dynamic range by boosting up some of the really dark areas of the image. I'm going to turn that on but I'm not convinced that I'm going to have to use it for this image. Okay. Now you can see that I've got this strange sort of lifted black point effect down here on the bottom right. I'm not a big fan of what it's doing, but it can be useful in scenes that have really, really high contrast. So I'm going to quickly have a little play with the strength, and that's just how much of the effect is applied. But frankly, I'm not sure that it's something that I'm going to need for this image. 
Now in this software, if there's a tool that you use and then you decide that you don't want the effect, what you can do is just click the X here and that's going to turn it off and cancel any of the effects it's having. Okay, next one down is gain. Now this is grain and noise reduction. Now I'm shooting 100 speed transparency, which is probably the finest grained film there is. Now I could turn this on and what it would do is it would try and take some of the grain out of maybe areas of the sky, but I'm not gonna use it because I don't mind the grain and I also think that when it is such a fine grain film, all this is gonna do is just make the scan take longer now you can use this if you're shooting, say, HB5 post to, to 1600, and it will have a bit of an effect on the image. But here, it really isn't going to do anything. So like the Adaptive Contrast Optimizer, I'm going to turn this off, and that's not going to be used for this scan. Last on this leftwards column is Multiple Exposure. Now this does two scans, one with a, a normal scan, and the other one with a kind of long exposure scan. And what this tries to do is get a little bit more detail out of your shadow areas. Now I could use this, and what I would do is maybe have a little bit more detail in this kind of cave in the bottom right of the image, but I quite like having that in shadow. I don't think that I really will gain much in the image from turning that on, and it does add a long time to the scan, so I'm going to leave that one off as well. These tools are for calibrating your printer, uh, your scanner with... Um, Calibration targets. Now I've done that and I'm not going to need to use these. You only really have to use these when you're setting up for a print or something, but that's that's fine. I can leave these ones. So going back through the tools I've used, mid-tone looks good, contrast looks good. I always like to have a little tinker with these right at the end before I click scan because you'll be amazed at how much some small adjustments can affect the image. But that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so that's all ready. Time to click scan, and that's going to send the file Lighthouse to my desktop. Okay, looks like my scan's finished. So what I'm gonna do is close Silverfast, go back to my desktop, and let's go open up a new finder window. Desktop, here we go. So let's open this up with preview and have a quick look at what we've got. Hang on, it's just on the wrong monitor. So here we go, here's my scan. Right then, I think that looks pretty smart. I'm really happy with how this image came out and yeah, I hope that some part of my scanning process has been interesting, educational. If you guys have any further questions, then please feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and get back to those. I, um, I know that there's a quite a significant depth to Silverfast as software goes, so there are things that I haven't covered, but if you have got questions, I'm always happy to help. Thanks for watching.